you can see here I have a solar panel and this solar panel I didn't build myself I actually bought this off eBay for $39 and the reason I bought a real solar panel is because I just wanted to have something to use with little projects and uh, build prototypes before I built like the real thing so it's just nice to have and I just wanted to get an idea how a real solar panel actually felt how it was built up close because I mean pictures can just show you so much but when you can actually feel it and actually look at it observe it and everything just gives you a better idea how it's all put together here but uh, looking back here it does have a junction box on it but what it doesn't have in the junction uh, in the junction box like mine had in it it's a blocking diode in here so I'm probably just going to have to install one of those if I do uh, wish to use a battery with this system but anyway for this solar panel, the blue uh, lead here is the uh, positive and the brown is the negative. As you can see, they do have the bus wires here. And remember, in my solar panel, I had like 22 gauge wires coming out to the junction box. So, like I was telling you, most people do use bus wire to come on out of here. And again, it's just a neat way of seeing how this is all built a professional solar panel. And the junction box is pretty neat. It just slides on it like this. And this is a 6 watt solar panel and on a open circuit it produces 21.1 volts and on a short circuit it produces 0.38 amps so it's a fairly small solar panel but again I'm just using it for like small projects and uh, little prototypes that I might build. And here to the side here uh, I just didn't want to make a video with me just showing the solar panel so I just figured I would show you how to do something. But it's fairly easy. What I'm just going to show here, since this is just going to be like a prototype solar panel, I was just going to install some of these alligator clips that I got for Radio Shack on the ends of these leads here. And it'd just be easy for me to unhook it and everything. And I'm going to use this heat shrink tubing, which I didn't use in my last video, which I said I didn't need. So I guess I'll just show you how to use heat shrink tubing. Something real simple. I mean, probably could figure it out on your own but I, I just figured I'd show you something in this video so let's just go ahead and get started with this so starting from scratch here I'm just gonna figure out how much wire I'm gonna use I really don't need that much but I do want these to be red and black so it'll be easy for me to just know right off the bat which one is positive and which one is negative without even looking at it so I'm guessing this be enough for this solar panel here and again I'm just going to do this for the negative as well try to get it close to the same length here alright so for the heat shrink tubing uh, it, they do come in different sizes as you can see here the one on the left is a little wider than the two on the right and the size does matter because if it's too big, it's not really going to uh, shrink that much. It's not going to shrink to the, the amount that you want it to. So you definitely want to get something that's close to the size of the wire that you're trying to heat shrink over. And what you want to make sure you do when we connect these wires, you want to make sure you put the heat shrink tubing over the wires before you even twist them together. So I'm going to just go ahead and get this one here started. And then what you want to do, let me just zoom in a little bit on here. You just want to slide the heat shrink tubing over both of the wires. Alright, so when we do that, now I can just take my heat gun or it says a torch, either or some I, I used to just use a lighter. It works fine. Just try not to burn the heat shrink tubing too much so then we just want to start from the middle and then just work our way out let me just zoom in zoom out a little bit so you see it's starting to shrink up here and you probably just want to go around it just a little bit more Again, it's just a regular lighter here. All 
then it just make sure it's on there really tight and you just want to do the same thing for the other wire the positive wire as well and most of you just use like uh, electric tape or something like that but this is just a little bit more professional way of doing it so I'm just going to do the same thing to the positive wire then we'll just be ready to hook up our alligator clips so again I just slid that over my positive wire I'm going to start to heat this up again here and get on the other side as well That's it. That's all it is. Again, it's fairly easy to do. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is I had I'm gonna use some more heat shrink tube and I put over both of the wires since I have some extra left over. I could just leave it like this without this larger heat shrink tube that I'm gonna put on here. I'm just gonna cover this from this point right here. Go ahead and heat shrink both of these together. All right, that should do it. Get in here just a little bit more. All right, so for this alligator clip here, inside the insulation here is an actual metal piece, as you can see here. I just actually pushed this inward to actually find it. And what I would do is just take this lead here, my positive lead, and actually put it in there and crimp it. And that'll be all you have to do, and just slide the insulation back over it. So here's the finished alligator clip to the positive uh, connection here. And again, you see how much easier it would be just for me to actually test things with it. I'm just going to do the same thing for the uh, negative connection as well. Alright, so here's the finished product. And like I said, it, it's a fairly simple uh, process here. And just uh, get a close-up on the actual heat shrink tubing. And what I'm going to do now is actually take it outside and just test these alligator clips just to make sure that they're uh, hooked up to the leads on the wires here All right, so here we are outside so now I'm just gonna go ahead and hook this up to my digital multimeter get some quick readings off of it make sure everything's working correctly Alright, so looks so far it's working right. As if you can see it, I'm getting about 20.7 volts. It should be getting 21 volts on an open circuit. And just to check the amps to make sure that's giving me the right reading. And that's fairly right. Uh, it should be giving me close to 0.4 amps actually. So let me probably lift this up here. And as you can see, the amps are going up. Sun is kind of at a angle here, so it's not really directly over my solar panel. So I can tell that it is hooked up correctly. And I recommend that anybody who does, does this just to check to make sure everything's working right. So yeah, that completes this, I guess, this short tutorial on how to, I guess, work with heat shrink tubing. And again, I'm just using the solar panel for like quick projects. As you can, uh, that's the reason I'm hooking uh, these alligator clip, clips up to it so I can easily just disassemble it from anything that I might be testing. So that's all this solar panel is for, and I hope this helps any of you guys who might didn't know how to use heat shrink tubing.